Oh, Titus Media. I know that everybody thinks that they know this subject really well. And you probably do, but there's a couple things that I just want to go over real quick so we make sure that we don't miss anything that's important. So, Titus Media happens to a lot of people. Uh, three out of four kids have three episodes by two. And it's caused more often by bacteria than it is by a virus. And they look pretty similar in presentation, so we're kind of going to just assume that these are bacteria, bacterial infections. Estimonia, H flu. This isn't the same H flu that we uh, vaccinate against, so don't take this as one of those historical points that we used to get it by H flu. No, this is something we do, uh, we get today. It's a significant cause of otitis media. And then your viruses and influenza A, RSV, parainfluenza. So these kids come in, they've got problems. They're crying, they're tugging on their ears, and so you look in the ear just like you do with every kid, and you see some redness, um, sometimes bulging, sometimes retraction, and uh, you get loss of or displacement of the light reflex. And if you're going to use... Uh, your insufflator bulb, which I haven't seen a lot of people do, but it's it seems like it's a pretty good idea. You'll see a decrease in mobility of the tympanic membrane. So the things that it might be that uh, you have to just make sure you're getting the right di diagnosis. Viral otitis media is about a quarter of these. And like I said before, we're probably just going to assume that these are bacterial just because they're more often bacterial and we don't want to miss it if it is. Otitis externa, it's just going to look differently once you uh, put the otoscope in there. You're going to see um, erythema on the ear canal and not on the tympanic membrane. Otitis media with effusion is actually a whole different animal. This is not caused by infection, although it can uh, uh, precede infection and it can happen after an infection but uh, it's not caused by inf infection and therefore we don't have to treat it with antibiotics uh, a lot of these don't have any symptoms but they might have some hearing loss when they come in and uh, that's going to be uh, maybe a tip off um, chronic otitis media can happen um, and then teething is one that uh, I hadn't heard of until recently. It, these kids just come in, they pull on their ears similar to an ear infection, and you look in the ear and there's nothing wrong. And so that could be just because the, uh, the same nerves that supply uh, the teeth are uh, supplying the ear as well, and so uh, you get some uh, pulling on the ears, and uh, you don't have to treat it with antibiotics. So that brings us to treatment. These kids are in pain, so a lot of times we want to give them something for the pain, like ibuprofen or acetaminophen. For older kids, over two, you can give them benzocaine, uh, topical stuff for their ears. But you don't give it in under two because they can get methemoglobin, methemoglobinemia. And I don't know why that is. I should have looked up the uh, cause, but uh, please look it up and leave it in the comments below. You don't give them antihistamines. I don't know why anybody did give antihistamines, but that's something that they recommend not doing. The real treatment is amoxicillin. Give them high-dose amoxicillin, 80 to 90 milligrams per kilogram per day, uh, times 10 days. Except over two, you can cut it down to five to seven days. If it's not going away, then you give them augmentin or amoxicillin, amoxicillin uh, clavulanic acid. And then um, if you have a penicillin allergy, you go to a macrolide. Now, some people will go to cephalosporins. This is going to depend on what kind of an allergy they have. If it's a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction, including urticaria or anaphylaxis, then skip the cephalosporins, go to the macrolides. Because even though there's only a 5 to 10% cross-reactivity in cephalosporins, you don't want to risk it. Uh, you don't want to send somebody into anaphylaxis. Now, the macrolides do have some problems with coverage, so you're just going to have to play it by ear um, and uh, maybe switch antibiotics. 
Um, tubes is a big question. When do you put tubes in? Well, that's going to be up to the patient and you, but uh, the minimum amount of infections that they recommend is three infections in six months or four in 12 months before you even consider putting tubes in. So uh, if you... Um, if you have somebody who's uh, recommending giving uh, tubes after just a couple infections in a couple of years, it's probably not a good idea. So the complications we're trying to avoid by treating this, uh, tympanic membrane perforation can happen, mastoiditis, meningitis, this is supposed to say cholesteatoma, chronic otitis media, hearing loss is a possibility, especially if you're getting chronic uh, otitis media. So thanks for uh, sharing in health.ca for giving us that picture of acute otitis media. And for anybody who wants to help out, please leave a comment below to help us to make these videos better and uh, share, share the videos with others. And you can also go to worldmedicalschool.org backslash volunteer. There's lots of things that we need help with, like website design, logo design, uh, Editing is a big thing that we need, and you don't have to do a lot um, for us to give you some recognition for your help. So please, uh, please go to worldmedicalschool.org backslash volunteer. Thanks.